kids, especially high school players, and she's got some depth that's going to really show up in the next two years. And we have said that this is but into uh, one of the better rivalries in the Missouri Valley Conference. You mentioned the proximity. They're recruiting against one another. They're only three hours apart. And you can't overlook what happened here last March. Illinois State is the eighth seed, beating the number one seed, Indiana State, to get to the NCAA tournament. First time in the history of the tournament that an eighth seed won the Valley Championship. And I know that just brings a smile to your face when you think about somebody's got to wear Cinderella's slipper, and last year it was the Lady Redbirds. Well, the Birds had an unbelievable run at the end of the year, and credit this coaching staff for getting them where they needed to go. Credit the kids because they continued to believe but you've got to believe there's just a little bit of, of attitude left in the Sycamores from that game. Now, they did a little payback in, in Terre Haute two or three weeks ago, but it's not the same as beating them here. That's right. The first week of January, back on the 7th of January, Indiana State beat the Redbirds 92-76 in the first matchup of the year between the two squads. Illinois State leads the overall series 35-31, but again, the Redbirds have won four of their last six, and there's not a whole lot of teams in the Missouri Valley Conference that can say that they have had success against this Sycamore team. The Sycamores come in right now ninth in the NCAA in scoring at 79 and a half points a game. They love to press, they love to score. They've won 15 games in a row. They started the season two and two, probably scratching their head. All they've done since then is rattle off 15 wins. Well, and that 15 game winning streak is number two in the nation. They're tied with Tennessee Chattanooga, who they beat earlier in the WNIT. North Carolina is the only team now left in the country that has a longer winning streak, and that's at 21. Yeah, so you've got a team with a lot of success coming into Redbird Arena against a team that wants to beat the top. And Indiana State is in its red, or it's a traveling dark blue jerseys. Illinois State in the home whites with red trim, and the Redbirds have the opening tip. And we are underway for basketball here at Redbird Arena. Women's college hoops here on WMBD TV. Glad you're alongside. Indiana State's opening in their traditional zone defense. It's a good matchup. And a good start for the Redbirds is Amber Shelton, the sophomore from Edwardsville High School, knocks down the jumper. And that's really her game, isn't it? About a 15-foot jump shot. That's where Amber can excel. I think she's a slasher. She can get to the basket. I think she's increased her range somewhat this year, but she'd still rather pull up and shoot it. Here's Weddle. She's got a good shot, too. Missed it. But the rebound is put right in by Menpaw. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast can score inside and outside. Menpaw's a kid that has consistently gotten better every year for the sport. Oh, Robin Pinchton did not like giving up that offensive putback, and I think she's going to have something to say. How do you like that? We've played 40 seconds, and we've already got a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout that Robin burns. And we mentioned that Indiana State, not only do they score a lot of points, uh, Jill, it's because they get a lot of possessions, and they get them off their full-court pressure. So we're going to see this team play 94 feet against the Burrs. For 40 minutes. And the, the advantage that Sycamores have is Jim has been playing a good 10 players deep all season, and he's really, you know, priming his underclassmen to take over next year, and they're getting a lot of floor experience. Again, keep your eyes on number 22, Melanie Flynn for Indiana State, and number 10, Christy Cerrone for Illinois State, two of the better players in the league. Cerrone likely the freshman of the year in the conference, and Beglin, there would have to be a major, major, major malfunction in the voting if she's not the conference player of the year. There's a half-court trap now, and the Redbirds turn the basketball over. Well, mistake by Illinois State, taking the ball to the corner in the front court. They need to keep the ball in the middle of the floor to avoid that trap. And so the first turnover against the Birds, and Indiana State will have the basketball. We've played just one minute here at Redbird Arena. It's a 2-2 ball game. Illinois State and Indiana State, the Sycamores, looking for a school record 10-0 and start. And now the Sycamores turn the basketball over. Illinois State stayed in a zone matchup. The entire first game against the Sycamores, they're playing man so far in this, this game. And we might see some switching between zone and man defense today. No question. Nice job by Tiffany Hudson to break that pressure in the backcourt, but it's only leaving the Redbirds about 20 seconds to run an offense. Hudson looks to the outside. Now it's Cerrone with 10 on the clock to the baseline, draws contact, and we're going to get a couple of free throws. And that's one of Cerrone's strengths. He'll attack that basket, try and get that foul. This young lady is just a freshman, Jill, but she plays with enough poise to be an underclassman. Oh, no uh, question. But, but look how well she goes into the defense as she attacks the basket. And, you know, she's trying to get that three-point play. Second in the Missouri Valley Conference in assists per game in the conference at four and a half. Uh, you know, she's a, 
in the top 10 in seven different league categories, and she's got a two-month, you know, learning curve. <laughs> Think about that. She's just got the poise of an upperclassman. It's so unusual to see a freshman assert themselves as a leader, and Cerrone has definitely done that. She knocks down the free throws to give the Redbirds a 4-2 lead. Now Beglin backs her down and flips it back out. That's the matchup we're going to keep our eye on all afternoon long. Now it's Weddle. She works on Shelton, missed a shot, tipped around, and Weddle went and got it, but she was standing on the baseline, so that's another turnover against the Sycamores. The Redbirds are definitely trying to force Weddle to put the ball on the floor. She's much better as a catch-and-shoot kid. She's a great three-point shooter. Yeah, the Sycamores love the three-point shot. Weddle, Verha, very comfortable shooting from the perimeter. Here's Holly Hallstrom's first shot of the game. It's missed. Back to get the rebound is Mempa. Hallstrom careered against the Sycamores in January. 30 points in a losing effort. Now from the outside, that's a missed shot by Beglin, but Indiana State with the offensive board. And now an opportunity for free throws coming for Stephanie Lish. At 5'10", she's really a, she's a, she's a perimeter player that can post up, and that was a good example of it. Well, you know, they've started playing Lish at a four more this year. She started her career at a three position. She was freshman of the year a couple years ago, but she's a lot like Amber Shelton. They both like to slash, attack the basket, physical players. And she played her prep basketball in this state at Belleville Altoff, so very familiar with the, uh, the the basketball world here in Illinois and the prep hoops. You get a good look at Jim Weedy again. What a job he's done. Six years and completely has turned the Sycamores program from the bottom of the league to the top of the league. Now that is a Cinderella story, what he has done at Indiana State. It's just amazing. He's teamed at the WNIT last year and looking for an NCAA oh. berth this year. <laughs> How do you like that? Right, that right place, right time for the pass as Hudson and Shelton break that pressure. That'll be the key today. Got a, a blocking foul going to be called against the Sycamores. No shot. Well, we're going to get two shots on the play, it looks like. Well, that could have almost gone either way. Rachel Manpaw got there. I think the official must have thought it was just a second too late. But you're going to see good depth from the Sycamores. They're going to come in with Laura Rudolphy, who has been just as effective, if not more so, than Manpaw sometimes. And now the officials have counted that basket for Halstrom, so it's going to be a three-point opportunity. And we'll identify the officials, Connie Pardue, Rich Foxen, and David Rittman working this afternoon's game here in Normal. And now a three-point play opportunity for Halstrom, who knocks down the free throw. And so the Redbirds are back in front by three, now it's 7-4. Rudolphy, as you mentioned, Jill, what a wonderful game she had against Missouri State. Almost a coming out party there a couple of weeks ago, and she's just one more weapon that Jim Weedy can pull off his bench. I, I think she's a nice player for them. Great mobility, works hard, gets their boards. That's her on LaShawn Johnson. Yeah. Shot it right over Johnson and in. So Rodolphe's first hoop of the night, she's averaging about six a game. And there's that full court trap pressure, and Cerrone dribbles right through it. To the baseline, to the near side. Hudson for three. Missed it. Offensive rebound, Hallstrom. She's been working the glass. Holly Hallstrom has just improved her game so much. She gets to the boards well. She's got a good shot close to the basket. You know, covering your weak side boards is so critical, and Rodolphe just didn't get a body on her. Hallstrom, a senior, took advantage of it. And Hallstrom has really stepped up her game, especially in the wake of injuries, early season injuries to Ashley Sandstead, we mentioned, and Nicole Lewis. Sandstead was really having a great season, and so was Nicole Lewis, another freshman for the Redbirds, and perhaps the fans in Central Illinois don't realize they were starters out of the lineup now due to injuries, and, and the rest of the teams had to pick up the slack. Oh, you're absolutely right, and that's really opened the door for players like LaShawn Johnson and Lori Trumley, but... Uh, Losing Nicole Lewis was just a real blow, and I think Ashley Sandstead was just the heart of the team. So those were huge losses for the Redbirds. Here's Beglin. She's still looking for her first point. Redbirds have done a nice job of keeping the ball out of her hands. You know, the very first time these two teams played this season, Christy Cerrone got in foul, foul trouble very early. She has really matured in her game. She's just kind of letting it come to her and not being overly aggressive with Beglin. Well, Robin Pinchon this week said that she learned a lot from that matchup in Terre Haute. You think that's how Hallstrom gets all of her rebounds? She just shoots it to, from one side to the other. <laughs> <laughs> now it's Shelton, pump fake, five-footer rolls in. And so Shelton now has knocked down a couple of jumpers and the Redbirds maintain a three-point lead at 9-6. 
Now it's Baglin looking for her first hoop. She had 46 on a double overtime win at Drake last week, the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week. Rodolfi is short on that jumper, and now Hudson comes away with it. How is this tempo as far as do the Redbirds want to play this kind of tempo, Jill? You know, both teams want up-tempo. There's no question that one of the keys for Indiana State is keeping an up-tempo, fast pace at both ends of the floor. But I think the Redbirds like that, too. That's their preference. Hudson on the baseline now. Flip out to Shelton. Thought about the three steps inside with six on the shot clock. Now it's going to be Hudson again, a three. Back of the iron, no good. Weddle goes and gets in the corner. Birds are really uh, winding down that shot clock, not always getting the shot they want. And that is a freshman, uh, Carrie Schilly, the hoop and the foul. And so she's got an opportunity for a three-point play. I think Schilly is going to be awesome for the Sycamore. She's strong. She attacks the basket well. We've got a, a timeout on the floor. Sycamores with a chance to tie the game when we come back at the free throw line. 9-8 Redford with 15-11 to go in the half. Back here at Redford Arena where the Illinois State Redbirds have an early 9-8 lead. Amber Shelton's knocked down her first two jumpers for the game, Joe. I, I think Amber's the most consistent player out there for Illinois State. She's leading them in scoring with almost 14 points a game during Valley play, but she can do it all. She can go to the basket, she can shoot the three, and she's improved her range tremendously this year. And now the freshman from St. Genevieve, Missouri, Kara Schilly, has tied the basketball game with that free throw. Now, Indiana State sub during that timeout. They have three of their freshmen on the floor right now, and that just tells you the depth in this program. Well, they've changed their press into more of a containment up the floor without the trap. Well, Sean Johnson gets her own rebound and the scores with the left hand. Redford did a nice job breaking the pressure. Absolutely. You know, before Indiana State, I think, playing more of a run and jump with the trap in it, and once they took that out, the birds beat it easily. Sycamores turn it over, their second of the game. Despite the, the pace and the pressure, we've seen very few turnovers here in the opening six minutes. I think each team with one turnover only the second for the Sycamores, but I just can't get over this lineup that Jim Weedy has put on the floor. Lish is the only starter left out there. They're just substituting waves. Megan McCracken with the basketball. She's just checked in. She misses her first shot, and it's uh, Shilly that comes away with it. Sycamores love to run the ball. Oh. How about McCracken coming back in the play and getting a steal? She trailed the play and stepped in the passing lane. That, that's when not getting down in transition pays off. <laughs> Sometimes the last will be first, as they say, huh? Megan has struggled since her first game back this season against Illinois. She had a great game, 25 points, and has not scored nearly as well since then. Well, Sean Johnson's going to be whistled for that foul at the perimeter. There was a lot of bodies flying all over the place, and she's the guilty party. That's her second, so she'll probably get a trip to the bench. She will. Lori Trumbly comes back in for the bird. LaShawn has worked so hard trying to improve her game, especially defensively, and trying to stay out of foul trouble. I'm sure she wasn't excited with that call. Now, that's been the one bugaboo in her game so far is the, is the foul trouble, and she finds herself on the bench with a pair already. Oh. And we got a whistle away from the basketball against the Lady Sycamore. That's been called consistently all season. That was an off-the-ball screen by Ashley Clark that just clipped Christy Cerrone that time. And so that foul is whistled against Clark, who is the Missouri Valley Conference newcomer of the year a year ago, and now she comes off the bench. Redbirds again, a nice job of breaking that pressure, and it's McCracken to Trumbly. Nice patience by Lori Trumbly. She's got great hands and a good shot. And now Jim Weedy wants to talk things over where the Redbirds have found a way to break that pressure with a long pass. Well, I, I think part of it is the combination that Jim Weedy's got on the floor. He's taken off four starters, and he's playing with rather an experienced group this early in the game. He, he's not a happy camper, though, and he sure lets them know when they aren't executing. Let's take another look at it. The Redbirds have gone over the top on this full-court pressure, and what they've done, Jill, is they've, they've, they've tried to to space the floor out where you've got the clogged in on one side, throw it over the top. Well, and the other thing that helps is they flash a player to the middle to try and draw the defense, and then they go deep over the top of that. We'll see that more as this game progresses, I think. Annie Bankhead is running the show now for the Sycamores. As you mentioned, one of those underclassmen on the floor, but they just they just substitute in waves. Wish driving. Missed the shot, tipped out of bounds. Who's going to get it? 
Illinois State, it looks like. The Sycamores have yet to really catch in their offensive flow and give credit to the Redbird D for that. You know, I think Illinois State's man defense is truly bothering them because they're playing personnel, they're not helping a lot, and they're forcing players to create their own shots right now. And Lisa Bearhoff returns to the game to replace Leah Phillips, who goes to the Sycamore bench. 13-9, a four-point Illinois State lead. The Redbirds with a basketball. They played six and a half minutes here at Redbird Arena. A rematch of last year's Missouri Valley Conference title game won by Illinois State. Trumbly. How about Hallstrom working the baseline again? Holly Hallstrom on the low block has been terrific here today. Holly Hallstrom has got great mobility for a 6'2 kid. There's no question. Now Baglin. Still looking for her first point. Now Baglin struggling to score after a 46-point performance last week at Drake's to win in double OT. Maybe she got all of her points out of her system in Des Moines. Well, you know, the following game at Creighton, she only had eight. So uh, it's hard telling. Baseline move now. Amber Shelton can't get the reverse to go down. Ball's out of bounds, and it's still on State's basketball. Wow, Rudolphy got a piece of that going out, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Ashley Clark. And the Sycamores have brought a nice fan contingent right under the basket. They're not too happy about that call. Christy Cerrone will trigger. Now a fresh 30 seconds on the shot clock for the Redbirds, who had the basketball oh. in the lead. And it's inside to Megan McCracken. Uh, that was, uh, I don't think, in the design play right there. Megan took advantage of a nice open cut. Now Baglin, still scoreless. Missed the shot, and it's going to be a foul against her going for the rebound. Uh, Indiana State's really trying to clear out for Baglin going to the basket. I think that was a frustration foul that time by Mel. Missed the shot, one of the boards. Well, the team that so far has run the table in the Missouri Valley Conference starting 9-0 in the league, struggling against Illinois State. The Redbirds D is causing the Sycamores all kinds of trouble. Shelton, that's her first miss of the day. Ball's out of bounds, and it's going to go to Redbird. Ball. Redbird. Oh, wow. Jim, Jim Weedy Weedy's going to go ballistic on that call. Yeah, the officials are discussing it, I think. Look at Kristen Weddle telling Weedy to just sit down. <laughs> That's great. That's such a senior lady team. I mean, Weddle, a senior, played high school ball with Beglin and Lisa Verhoff. They've played together for a long time. And again, they're still trying to sort this out here. It appears that the Redbirds are going to get the basketball. I think they are. But they're going to reset the shot clock, maybe. Maybe that's exactly what they're going to do, yep. try to determine who had possession. Uh, and, and for fans that are just tuning in to women's basketball for the first time, the women have a 30-second clock compared to the men's 35. And it's surprising what a difference those five seconds make. Which is one reason why you don't see a 10-second call on the backcourt. There's no 10-second in the women's game exactly. either. Exactly. Here's Hallstrom again. Posting up on Menpa. 15 to shoot. It's Trumbling. Wow. How about the Redbirds running that offense and kicking it up to Cerrone? And Cerrone gets a cutting Trumbly who puts it in. It's a 10 point lead for the Redbirds. Illinois State being very patient offensively here. Melanie Beglin is 0 for 5 from the floor. The reigning Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week. You know, Beglin had 30 points in that game last year for the NBC Championship. So she can turn it on and she can take over a game. Yeah, she had about 17 in the final 10 minutes. She was awesome. Uh, she truly was awesome. Six to shoot. Shelton for three. Ah. Missed it. Menpa comes away with it for the Sycamores. Well, yeah, that that would have been a big a, yeah, she was just a little bit too open, I think, on that one. Weddle tries to answer. Can't get it. Men on the offensive board. Now Verhoff, a terrific three-point shooter. She can't get it to go either. Well, the well, Sycamores are ice cold from the field. That was one pass with two shots, though. They're taking a really quick offense to try and keep that tempo up. Indiana State now 3 of 13 from the floor. 3 of 14 at 21%. Very atypical and atypical that they're not shooting well at the three. 
inside to Hallstrom. Offensive foul against Holly Hallstrom. Redbird fans are not liking that. We've got a timeout on the floor. The Redbirds have a 10-point lead over the Valley leading Indiana State Lady Sycamores. It's 19 to 9 early on at Redbird Arena. More and more people are rinsing daily with prevention mouth rinse. Have you tried it? I'm Amy Rupert. I use prevention mouth rinse every day. I've been practicing pharmacy for years, and I'm a mom. My family uses it, and I recommend it to all my customers. From canker sores and mouth ulcers to bleeding gums, I've seen it work on all types of oral conditions, providing relief almost instantly. This product gets results. Prevention mouth rinse, recommended by professionals everywhere, available at these locations. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 power plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activations line arranged by this station for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. <laughs> Ten point Illinois State lead 19 to 9 here at Redwood Arena over the Valley leading Indiana State Sycamores. Kurt Pegler, Jill Hutchison with you. Glad you're alongside for women's college basketball here on News Channel 31. The Redbirds have done it on both ends of the floor, Jill. They, they've run their offense efficiently, and they're holding the Sycamores to 21% shooting from the floor. Well, surprisingly, they're controlling the boards right now, 13 to 9. I think Illinois State's playing with great focus, and they're getting a lot of kids involved in this game right now. Melanie Beglin with the basketball now, driving and drawing contact. She'll get to the free throw line, it appears. Oh, Christy Cerrone really crashed into the basket support on that. Mel Beglin does a great job of using and reusing her screens and finding a way to get to the basket. And she does not shy away from the, the physicalness of the game. At five foot six, you'd think that maybe she'd just set her at the perimeter, but she, she loves to bang it around inside, doesn't she? She does, there's no question. She likes attacking the basket and getting banged in there. And her first point of the game comes nearly 10 minutes into the game. And again, we're talking about the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week and certainly the, the front runner for the Conference Player of the Year honors who averages better than 18 a game and is coming off a 46-point performance at Drake last week. Nice pass down low, and the Redbirds score with Brea Banks. Tiffany Hudson continues to impress. She has gotten better every ball game. She came into the starting lineup after the injuries, and she has just been solid for Illinois State. Shilly inside the Menpa, who double dribble. Six turnover for Indiana State. Well, she didn't get a great feed on that, and Menpa tried to go too soon before she really got the ball there. Now the Redbirds are playing with a lot more poise than they really have been in the, in the last month. Wouldn't you say it's fair to say about the last three or so? Three two weeks. weeks or so, yeah. Two weeks, and it's been a huge difference. So their their win that. over Missouri State at home was a, a real turn for them. They turned around and beat Wichita two days later. Then they go on the road, beat Creighton at Creighton for the first time in school history. Oh, oh nice job. That was Beglin yeah. that tapped that out. Back tapped out, and in the extra possession is a, is a basket that time by Tiffany Rada. That's what happens when you keep the offensive boards alive. No question, and Beglin was smart to tip it and not try and grab it. The Indiana State having to get out of that zone and into a man now to try and, and stop Illinois State's offense. McCracken for three, missed it. Trumbly tried to have it, tipped it out. Another offensive set for the Birds. Now it's crumbling. Oh, yeah. She may have walked. She did. Good call by Rich Foxen. We'll see another freshman come in and Leah Phillips. Phillips, a great three-point shooter for the Sycamores. 
she careered against the Redbirds. 14 points in that game. She had four three-pointers. Well, Indiana State has done seemingly everything right so far this year, but they're really struggling here from the floor. The Redbirds have done a nice job of kind of keeping the Sycamores on the, on the wrong foot here all first half long. Rudolphy's back in the game. That's her with the basketball. Short shot, can't get it to go. Redbirds come away with it. That's Banks with the rebound. Okay, one difference in the birds now and three weeks ago is defensively they're so much more disciplined. Quick shot that time by McCracken. 21-12, the Illinois State advantage as we approach the eight-minute mark left here in the opening half. Schilly, the freshman. Kick out to Lish. Now it's back to Schilly. Two-person game. She missed the shot again. Well, the Sycamores must think there's a lid on that basket. Yeah, they'll probably be happy to change in here pretty soon. Banks. Baseline jumper can't get it. McCracken, the one-handed rebound. Cerrone had the ball knocked out of her hand. Christie's yet to make a shot from the field. She does have a free throw. Tell you what, Megan McCracken's doing a good job for Illinois State on the offensive board. Now Cerrone for three. Left open from the corner. Wow. She has the all-time freshman mark in three-point shooting. She surpassed one of your former players in Jenny Schmidt. I'll tell you, if you can beat Jenny Schmidt at three-point, you're doing a you're great doing job. You're something right. So Chrissy Cerrone, and she's got nine games left, and she'd already passed Jenny by two three-pointers, 33 of them so far this season. Well, you're getting a good look at the future of Illinois State basketball in Christy Cerrone, just a freshman. Well, surprisingly, uh, this is a very young team all together. McCracken tries the three from the other corner, can't get it to go. Boy, Megan has just struggled to score and, and very atypical. She's got a sweet shot and it just isn't falling for her. She has a dislocated pinky finger, yeah. which might be altering the shot. It's hard to say. Rodolfi rims out. Offensive rebound, though. Nice job by Chile. Uh, again, players attacking from the top of the key are getting a lot of the boards at both ends. Whoa. Nice pass down low. It was great at a lift. Nice back door cut by Stephanie Lish. And Lish, the junior from Belleville, scoring off the glass. The Sycamores needed something. The Redbirds lead is, is 10. Hudson thought about the shot now. We approach the six minute mark left here in the opening half, a good half of the Redbirds. Banks left open 12 footer, rolls off. Birds running their offense well. They're just not getting some of them to fall. Brea Banks has got a nice shot for a freshman. Whoa. Oh, near steal that time by Banks. Rodolfi, her short jumper's down, so the Sycamores have made consecutive hoops. Looks like Lori Tremley's really getting a little bit tired with this pace. If she has a weakness, that's going to be her problem. Well, Robin Pinchton loves her game because she's perhaps the most fundamentally sound player on the team, and there's a nice pass to a oh. cutting Banks, but she can't finish. And now we've got a whistle and a timeout. Jim Weedy wants... A timeout. He's going to be granted a 30-second timeout. It's a 30. We'll step away. 5.37 to go here. Check that. We're going to keep it here. 24-16, the Redbirds leading the Sycamores with 5.37 to go here in the half. And I, I think if you'd have told Robin Pinchton before the game, Jill, that she would have an eight-point lead with five and a half minutes to go in the half, she'd say, I'll take this. Yeah, no question. But since she had 12 a couple minutes ago, she's probably wondering where those four points just disappeared. And you get the feeling that Indiana State's getting a little bit of momentum here. I think Illinois State's getting the shots they want. They're not putting them down as well as they did earlier. Well, you know that the longer that a veteran team hangs around and hangs around and you don't put them the way, the more dangerous they become. There's no question, and I think that's what's happening. And Jim Weedy doing a nice job shuffling players in and out and keeping his kids as fresh as he can. And Melanie Beglin, Men Paul, uh, Weddle, all back on the floor right. again for the Sycamores. Essentially the starting five, except for Leah Phillips, who's, yeah. who's on the floor right now. She did not start the game. Lish missed the shot, and it's off her hands and out of bounds. The Redbirds will get it. Good help in there by LaShawn Johnson that time to send her back to the baseline. Timeout on the floor. Redbirds have an eight-point lead at 24-16 over the Lady Sycamores. 
This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 power plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activation Line, arranged by this station, for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. This year, your team could win it all. It's Hoops in the Heartland, March 9th through 12th in Springfield. Don't miss the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament featuring all 10 Valley teams. Get your tickets now. Freshman Christy Cerrone with her first three-point make of the afternoon left open from the corner, and she'll make it all day unguarded. Uh, she'll take it all day. <laughs> you know, she's not shy, and if she misses three in a row, she'll still come back and shoot another one. And that's what you like about Christy Cerrone. She has just got a passion to win. She mentioned she owns the ISU freshman record now with uh, 34 made three-point shots. Just adding to that total with every make. Cerrone out of the game right now. Tiffany Hudson, that's her at the top of the circle, kind of running the show for the Birds with 10 on the shot clock here in this possession. Amber wow. Skelton for three. That's definitely called in your face. Just standing there, and she didn't have another option. And the last two three-point shots that she made, she airballed, so it didn't stop her from having a little confidence to put that one up. Mempa missed with the left hand. LaShawn Johnson back on the defensive end for the Birds. Boy, she just took that out of Beglin's hands. That's when size makes a difference. That's Shelton guarded by Weddle gets a nice screen there from Johnson. I tell you what, this is probably more man defense than Sycamores have played in the last month. Near steal that time. Eight to shoot. Five on the clock. Hudson looking for penetrate. Lost the dribble, looking for help. Three on the shot. Puts up the shot. Air ball is going to be a shot clock violation. Tiff was really looking for somebody and had no options. I don't think she had confidence in that shot. And now Cerrone's going to come back in. She got a quick two-minute break. So Hudson out and Cerrone in. So the Redbirds have Shelton, Johnson, Hallstrom, McCracken, and Cerrone on the floor. This is, this is as veteran as they get. That's a, a freshman, two sophomores, a junior, and a senior. <laughs> and now Indiana State has its original starting five on the floor with Lish, Weddle, Beglin, Verhoff, and Mempa. My guess is Jim Weedy's going to try and stay with this combination to the end of the half. Here. And Lish driving, scoring, and getting the foul. She's done that a couple of times this afternoon. Lish very strong attacking the basket. She's great, especially with her right hand. She can really get to the, to the back. Well, she hurt the Redbirds in Terre Haute. 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals in that game in January. Yeah, she had some fun. She comes from a pretty athletic family, though. Her father uh, was a quarterback at Notre Dame. And, you know, she's got a lot of really athletic blood in her. I'm guessing that helps a little bit when, when you've got some athletic blood in you. Yeah. Under four minutes to go here in this opening half. The Redbirds 27-19. They've led for the uh, entire half. Indiana State cranking their defense up a little bit, though. Now it's Shelton who's had the hot hand. Cut off on the baseline with six on the clock. Now Cerrone, three from the top of the circle. Missed it. Now it's Beglin, and the Sycamores trying to up-tempo it in the front court. All the way down, stutter step. Kick to Mempo, who trailed the play and missed the shot. I thought for a minute Beglin twisted an ankle, but I think she just lost balance for a second. The Sycamores, seven of 26 from the floor now. It's Cerrone Whoa. draws contact. 
That's a big time collision. She is not afraid to take the ball to anybody. And I'll tell you what, that was really a great take because Lish was off balance to play defense on that, even though she was between her and the basket. Cerrone will have free throws when we come back. 3.18 minutes left in the opening half in the Redbirds. Lead the Sycamores, 27-19 basically helpless. The wind was howling. The storm rolls in. My little boys were awful scared. A swath of it, at least 40 miles. And that's when the hail began to fall. It sounded like a train. Bam, bam, bam. Pretty good sized dents. Didn't even try to count how many there were. There was a message from Barb, Barb Cadu, my agent. She was checking on all of her customers to see how they had fared with the storm. I wanted my clients to feel at peace. Barb actually called me first. Country Insurance and Financial Services. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 Power Plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activation Line, arranged by this station, for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. My wife, the caddies, especially the veteran caddies. Our next televised game here on News Channel 31, one week from today, it'll be the men's edition of the War on I-74, Bradley and Illinois State, a 405 tip time here at Redbird Arena, and we'll have all the action for you on News Channel 31 next Saturday. Here, the Redbirds lead the Missouri Valley Conference leading Lady Sycamores of Indiana State, 27-19, just over three minutes to go in the half. Christy Cerrone, an opportunity to add the Redbird lead. You know, Jim Weedy's got to be thinking that Robin Pinson's got his number. Uh, it's just amazing how well the Redbirds have matched up against the Sycamores and how well they've played against them. Cerrone makes both of her foul both shots. Teams both teams in the double bonus now. And Cerrone with seven points. This is the third time Weedy has taken Melanie Beglin off the floor in this half. It's funny, we can talk all we want about how great a player she is, and she is a terrific player. She's great in the classroom, she's great on the floor. She was the, the Valley defense, uh, Defensive Player of the Year last year. We've been talking about her offensive accolades, but boy, the Redbirds have just made her look somewhat ordinary today. Yeah, they have done a nice job defending her. A travel violation before Andy Bankhead could shoot it in. And now another substitution is Lish, I'm sorry, Leah Phillips is going to come back in and send Bankhead back to the uh, bench. Bankhead's a kid that just joined this team in December. She had signed at Wisconsin. Wisconsin had trouble getting her admitted, they said, and uh, she ended up transferring to Indiana State at the end of the semester. LaShawn Johnson with Mempa on her. Here's Shelton, who had the hot hand to start the game. Been a little quiet lately, but lays it in. How about that move? Nice spin in there by Amber Shelton. Shelton now leading the Redbirds with nine points, and the Illinois State lead is 12 points, the largest of the game at 31-19. Two and a half to go here in this opening half. Lish, she has been the best weapon so far for the Sycamores. No question. Lish is having a, a good ball game right now. But the players that are attacking the basket the best are the ones that are being most successful. The lob wow. down low to Trumbly, that from Shelton. Now it's back out to Johnson. She'll try the 12-footer and make wow. it. Now that's the difference in LaShawn Johnson in the last three weeks. She's put in her time. Her shot's beginning to fall. She hardly shot the ball in high school. She was a defensive rebounding specialist. Well, she's got such a physique on her and such oh, a yeah. presence that if she starts adding a 12 to 15 footer, she'll be a real weapon. Now no Mempa, wow. turn around, scored off the glass. Rachel, nice take by Mempa. That's a 10 point Redbird lead. Minute 40 to go. Here's Cerrone driving, flipped it up, couldn't get it. Mempa, the defensive board for the Sycamores. I think Cerrone was looking for some contact. It didn't happen on that. Now a three that goes down. It's Phillips, the freshman. You've mentioned that she's a good three-point shooter. She's made 19 now on the season. 
I'll tell you, that three-point shot can turn things around in a big hurry in both men's and women's basketball. Suddenly, the Sycamores are within seven. They were down 12 just a minute ago. Birds need a basket here to keep this game spread out. Trumbly's going to try. Three-point shot. Can't get it, but Johnson, the offensive rebound around two defenders and draw. Oh no, it's going to be an offensive foul. Again, a call that Mike could have gone either direction. LaShawn gets called for the charge. And now LaShawn Johnson has picked up her third foul, and so the foul trouble for Johnson continues. She was going forward. Defense looked pretty well set on that. Nice defense by the Sycamores to just hold position inside there. Well, she got a nice high five. Johnson did it. She went to the bench, Robin Pynchon applauding her for her efforts, and she did play well, but she's picked up her third foul, so Banks has come in to replace her. We're under a minute to go here in the half, and we've got a whistle away from the basketball against Illinois State. I think Amber Shelton's going to pick that up, trying to bump a cut by Kristen Weddle. Robin Pynchon not real happy with that call. She's got some foul trouble on her inside players. Weddle, who's a very good shooter at the free throw line, missed the free throw. But Indiana State sent three people back on that board, and they've done that fairly consistently, I think, to try and stop the Redbird transition. Shelton guarded by Weddle now. Try to screen and roll as McCracken. Her pass is picked off by Weddle. Yeah, I think everybody knew that one was on its way. And now it's almost identical. The shot clock and the game clock are about three-tenths of a second differential. So the Sycamores will be happy to hold for the final shot. Uh, Jim Weedy's going to really wind it down. You would think he would try and take a shot with at least six seconds to have a chance for an offensive putback here. Oh, well, they're going to run this for Weddle, it looks like. Four to shoot. The pass goes inside and a basket by Ashley Clark, her first of the half, and the Sycamores run a nice play and get a basket at the buzzer. Nice patience by the Sycamores to get a good shot there. And they pulled within five at the half, and they have to feel a little encouraged by the way they finished the half. But the Redbirds have the lead, 33-28. More from Norma when we come back. Make your Valentine's Day with a heart-shaped steak for two, cut from Hereford beef and aged to perfection, only from Pottstown Meat and Deli. After all, the way to anyone's heart is through their stomach. Pottstown Meat and Deli. Call 673-0680. The greatest mattress in America, everybody knows it's Lebeda. And now's the time to save on a great selection of Lebeda mattresses. Extra firm or pillow top queen sets start at only $2.99. Visco elastic memory foam queen sets start at only $4.99. Plus, for a limited time, get any premium Lebeda mattress set and pay nothing for a full year. No payments, no interest on mattress sets, electric adjustable beds, futons, and bedroom furniture. Great mattresses, great prices, great savings at Lebeda Mattress Factory. Don't get caught short with the statute of limitations expiring your injury case. Jay Jensen, one name says it all. Well, I can't walk. If you or a loved one suffer from limited mobility, we have incredible news. Now you may qualify for your very own new Invacare power chair or scooter at little or no cost to you. Call Mobility Products Unlimited right now to begin your free pre-qualification process. And yes, you can get back out there too with Invacare. So call now risk-free. Friendly mobility specialists handle all the paperwork. You could get your Invacare power chair or scooter within just days. Call 1-800-821-3631. No matter what gets you up, wake up to WMBD this morning. Brett Montine and Stephanie Brown catch you up on all the day's headlines every 15 minutes. And Crystal Morris helps you plan your day with weather where you live the entire show. So catch WMBD this morning and get your day off to a great start with the first look at what's important to you. Weekday starting at 5.30 only on News Channel 31. 10 out of 10 people agree. Bigger refunds are better. And at Sharp Income Tax Service, you'll get bigger refunds within minutes of walking through our doors. There's no faster way to get your money than Sharp's Money Now program. You'll get more refund and loan options than from any other tax preparation company. Plus, Sharp offers free electronic filing and, best of all, free check cashing. So don't wait weeks. Get your money now and get it cashed for free at Sharp Income Tax Service. 
Weather where you live with Chuck Collins on 97.3 River Country. Halftime at Redbird Arena where Illinois State leads Indiana State 33-28. The Redbirds trying to hand the Sycamores their first conference loss of the season. Kurt Pegler, Jill Hutchison back with you here in Normal. An encouraging first half of the Redbirds. Oh, I think their defense looked so much better than it has for so long. To hold Indiana State to 28 points in the first half was outstanding. Plus, to win the board. So, if the Birds can stay out of foul trouble, I think they've got a chance to pull this out. And they've held Melanie Beglin to one first half point. This is a woman that scored 40 two last week at Drake. That's absolutely amazing. In fact, right now, it's really the kids attacking the basket, Lish and Amber Shelton both, and the inside game that seems to be making the difference for both teams. What a big lift this would be for the Redbirds as they try to beat the Sycamores for the second straight year here at Redbird Arena. Back with more halftime from Illinois State. The Redbirds lead at 33-28. This is my license. I think my parents wanted me to have that car. I'd pick up my sister and do certain errands. Car's kind of handy to have. I called Bob, our insurance agent. He wanted us to come in and have a meeting with him, which really surprised me. I call it my new driver review. I went in and I met with Bob. He did answer a lot of my questions, the consequences with one accident, one ticket. I learned a lot when I was in there. I don't always listen to my parents. <laughs> it makes me feel good that Bob's worrying about her. Country Insurance and Financial Services. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 power plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activations line arranged by this station for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. At WMBD-TV, when we say we're making a difference for you, it's not only because we're more involved in our community, we're also making a difference in how we report local news to thousands of television sets across central Illinois every day. We report the facts and respect the truth. And that's our pledge to you. For thorough, fair, and balanced news, see the difference for yourself only on WMBD News Channel 31. A simple joy here in central Illinois. You've got to share spirit of Here's what's making your news at this hour. Police are searching for a Creve Corps man after a double shooting. Police say 19-year-old Patrick Bakaturski shot two-minute shotgun willies in Creve Corps. The shooting happened last night just after 10.30. Police say one of the victims was shot once. The other was shot as many as five times. The hospital has refused to release the victim's conditions. Authorities say Bakaturski could be driving a red Buick Riviera. They also say you should consider him armed and dangerous. And Bloomington police are now batting 1,000 when it comes to armed robbery arrests. That's after 25-year-old Jason Brown was arrested in Cicero, Illinois, last night. Police say Brown is the man who robbed the National City Bank on East Empire and Midwest Title Loans on IAA Drive in Bloomington. Both robberies happened January 23rd. The robber attacked clerks at each business with pepper spray. Now, this arrest comes a day after police nabbed two other people who were accused of several other robberies. Here's Justin with Weather Where You Live. Well, Jay, a chilly night tonight. Temperatures drop into the teens, but we'll see some clearing as far as the skies. So partly cloudy tonight, maybe a few flurries as we get on into the evening. Teens, as far as low temperatures, then tomorrow, high temperatures just around freezing. But we are looking at some sunshine. We're going to look at mostly sunny skies, down to partly sunny by the time we get to Monday, and only a few degrees warmer than the freezing point. A chilly week ahead. You'll see that here in our eight-day outlook. Beginning through this weekend, temperatures rounding out around the 30s as far as high temperatures then as we get toward the end of the week, much chillier down into the 20s.
This time of year, I just love escaping to a hot clearance sale. Catch an early winter break and save big during the final days of Furniture Row's winter clearance sale. We've taken final markdowns throughout the center to clear out excess and discontinued merchandise in one of a kind. And these extra discounts are on top of our 200% guaranteed lowest price pledge. We're also offering no payments and no interest for one year. Furniture Row Shopping Center. Slide in soon. Our winter clearance sale ends Tuesday, February 7th. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 power plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activations line arranged by this station for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. <laughs> Your team could win it all. It's Hoops in the Heartland, March 9th through 12th in Springfield. Don't miss the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament featuring all 10 Valley teams. Get your tickets now. The greatest mattress in America, everybody knows it's Lebeda. And now's the time to save on a great selection of Lebeda mattresses. Extra firm or pillow top queen sets start at only $2.99. Visco elastic memory foam queen sets start at only $4.99. Plus, for a limited time, get any premium Lebeda mattress set and pay nothing for a full year. No payments, no interest on mattress sets, electric adjustable beds, futons, and bedroom furniture. Great mattresses, great prices, great savings at Lebeda Mattress Factory. Rebounding totals, Indiana State has 19. Welcome back to Redford Arena, where Illinois State leads Indiana State 33 to 28. Halftime here at Redford Arena. And we're joined by Randy Welniak, one of the newer members of the Illinois State Athletics Department. He came from Fresno State, where he spent the last three years. It's a little bit different in, in Central Illinois wintertime than it was in Fresno, California, huh? Yeah, it's uh, it taken a little bit of time to acclimate, but uh, it's still, I'm originally from the Midwest, so I, I'm used to it. Tell us your impressions of Illinois State University here in your first uh, six months on the job. I'd say I'm really impressed with the overall program. The support of the community here really is a a great situation to be in and, and I'm happy to be a part of it. And I know fans want to know what's going on with facilities and what's, what's going on on campus for Illinois State. What can you tell us? Well, I tell you, uh, the first six months really was an opportunity for us to take care of our current and existing donor base. It's oftentimes you take people for granted in, in what they do. So we wanted to make sure we, we said thank you to all of our current and existing donors. And, and now we're embarking on our fundraising campaign which will start here in march and april and hope to hope to expand our base significantly yeah and tell us about it that's a big deal the annual campaign for the, the redbird club is really a focal point in your in your fundraising year isn't it it really is we have about 750 current donors to the athletic department what we want to do is is really get over that thousand mark at least in this first year and, and continue to expand it so that's uh our major focus over the next few months. Well, welcome to Central Illinois, and thanks for the visit, and, and bring the Red Bricks some good luck here in the second half. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Kurt. All right, Randy Welniak, one of the ISU Assistant Athletics Directors. Halftime here, the Red Bricks have a five-point lead. The second half is around the corner here on News Channel 31. When your doctor recommends GI, you need the Gastrointestinal Institute in Normal. GI is your provider of the virtual colonoscopy. The screening for colon cancer finds problems so they can be removed before cancer develops. A screening that can save your life. Virtual colonoscopy. Non-invasive. More accurate at GI. When you hear GI, ask for Dr. Mater and Dr. Kusro at the Gastrointestinal Institute. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package 
to bring you the new 2497 power plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activations line arranged by this station for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. Wake up with WMBD this morning. The perfect way to start your day. On Friday, we learned about a new computer virus being sent through email. The virus may come from someone you know as well as someone you don't know. It infects a system when someone opens up an attachment. Join us on Monday when we talk to the latest Survivor cast-off. Plus a visit from the English doctor and our weekly fitness tip. Plus the latest newsmakers, weather where you live the entire show, and more on WMBD This Morning. A new year means a new you, and your friends at Landmark Racket and Health Club want to help you find that new you. Right now, if you join at Landmark Racket and Health Club, you'll receive half off the initiation fee and free workout wear. And that's not all. Landmark offers several free drop-in classes, along with some other great fitness class promotions. Not to mention, limited nursery care is free, but you must join now. Membership rates beginning as low as $20 per month. Landmark Racket and Health Club, 3225 North Drees Lane, Peoria. Halftime at Redbird Arena, where Illinois State leads Indiana State 33-28. Let's take a look at a couple of highlights here from this opening half of play. That's all the Redbirds have the five-point lead. <laughs> that was a lucky tip out of there, but Amber Shelton has taken advantage of everything she's had in this first half. LaShawn Johnson has three offensive boards, and she took advantage of that one for her putback. The halftime statistics show that both teams are shooting about the same, Jill. 37% from the field for Indiana State, 38 for the Redbirds, and about the same from three-point range and exactly the same from uh, the foul line. But the rebounding edge goes to Illinois State. That's been a big factor here today. Well, even more so than the 19 to 23 is that Illinois State has eight offensive to Indiana State's five offensive. And that's the offensive putback opportunity that we just saw LaShawn take advantage of. Stephanie List, the leading scorer for the Lady Sycamores, with nine points. The Redbirds' leading scorer is Amber Shelton. She also has nine. And Christy Cerrone has chipped in seven for the Redbirds. And a glaring statistic is Melanie Beglin, the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week, who pumped in 46 last week at Drake, held to one first-half point. One. The Red Bird's doing Birds a great are job. doing a great yeah. job defensively, and you know they're not doing anything special. They're just trying to contain her right now. And so both teams have come back on the floor as we start second half action. They are starting the exact same five, which opened the game: Lish, Weddle, Beglin, Verhoff, and Mempa for the Sycamores, who have the basketball. They're in the uh, traveling blue uniforms. Redbirds in white here as we open the second half. A five-point lead for Illinois State. There's Beglin, and it took her just one possession to get her first field goal of the second half. Well, Christy Cerrone knew she was in trouble and just couldn't get out of the way quickly enough. Weak side defense needed to slide across and help on that penetration. You know, Beglin is the first player in Valley history with 1,500 points, 600 assists, and 400 steals. She does it at both ends of the floor. She now has four points after the three-point make. And here's that pressure. Looks like it's just kind of token pressure initially until they trap you at the timeline. Nice trap, so by Indiana State, and good pursuit on the ball. They come out of their trap really well to cover in the half court. Hallstrom, Hudson, Shelton, Trumbly, and Cerrone, the five to open the second half for the Redbirds. They started the game for the Redbirds. Four on the shot clock. Hudson the miss. Hallstrom got the offensive board. Oh. She couldn't get it to go down either. Two shots and nobody hit iron. That's tough. Now it's Beglin all the way down. Kick out to Menpa. Couldn't get it. Tipped around and the Redbirds come away with it. Well, this, this half is starting just as up-tempo as the first, if not more so. Big basket by <laughs> Tiffany Hudson. You're right. That was huge. That was huge kind for Illinois State. Stem the flow a little bit because the Sycamores really closed the first half on a, on a strong note and opened the, first, the second half the same way. You're absolutely right. Here's Beglin. 
Now she's starting to warm up a little bit. Uh, Beglin's going to be able to go over the top of Hudson. That's going to be tough to stop. So after mercy, missing her first five Whoa. shots from the field, she's made her first her first two here in the second half. Indiana State calling for a, a travel on Hudson there. I think they were right. Here's Hallstrom on the baseline. Kick out now to Hudson. He just made that long jumper. Hallstrom double team now. Seven on the shot clock. Hudson penetrates. Her pass intended for Trumbull. He's knocked out of bounds. The Redbirds will get it. Uh, that was lucky because actually Hudson hit it out and a Sycamore touched it on the way. But four seconds left on that shot clock right now. Cerrone the trigger under the basket looking Whoa. for help. She I'm not sure that the troublesome. Redbirds know. Wide open a shelf, but she couldn't get the shot oh, off. The Redbirds needed right about right another right half a second on the shot off. clock. Nice pass, though, by Hallstrom to find Shelton over on the weak side. Indiana State has cranked up their defense and their offense. Uh, they're coming out with much better focus this half. And down by 12 points at one point in the first half, they've got a chance to tie the game here. Mempa walks. Good call, Kurt. Mempa's not a happy camper. Well, the coaches always talk about the first five minutes of the second half being important, and it's certainly going to be the case here. It, it sets the tone for the entire half, and, and this is critical for both teams. Hallstrom. Double teamed again. Now it's Shelton working the baseline and trapped, and her pass is knocked out of bounds. Quick hands by Beglin. Beglin does a nice job anticipating off the ball, and her quickness is surprising. Yeah, you look at her, you might not think that she's a very quick player, but she's got an explosive first step. And as we mentioned, even at five foot six, she does not shy away from contact at all. No, you're absolutely right. Now Shelton drew contact. The ball was knocked out of her hands, and now two on one, the Sycamores. Beglin. Her pass, though, is on the floor, still on the floor. Redbirds come away with it. Christy Cerrone, tremendous defensive stand there. Now Cerrone, a three, missed it. And it's wet on the defensive rebound. Well, I'll tell you what, Illinois State is not backing down from a thing right now, including the intense pressure that Indiana State's putting on defensively. We've played three minutes into this second half. It's a two-point Illinois State lead. Kurt Pegler, Jill Hutchison with you from Missouri Valley Women's Basketball here at Redbird Arena. The Indiana State Lady Sycamores 9-0 in the conference, trying for a school record 10-0 start. The Illinois State's got other things in mind. The reverse layup that time wouldn't go down from Halston. Birds only with one field goal here in the second half. Mempa, she can't get it to go. Both teams a little winded right now. Yeah, no question. Mempa is really struggling inside. Two for seven so far in this game. Hudson has both red bird jumpers here in the second half. What a nice lift the sophomore from Naperville has given Illinois State. I'll tell you what, Tiffany Hudson is a spark. Robin Pinson's really trying to keep her team fired up from the sidelines. Menpa drives and scores. And so Melanie, I should say a Beglin, Melanie Beglin has found the range here in the second half. No question. She just drew a foul on that, getting a little over anxious going for the steal. Surprisingly, Beglin, who is one of the top defensive players in the country really has no steals yet in this ballgame. And now the uh, Sycamores are making some substitutions. As we mentioned near the top of the broadcast, they'll bring two, three players in at a time. And those underclassmen, a lot of times, just pick up right where the upperclassmen left off. Yeah, no question. I'm impressed with their bench. Trumbly, foul line jumper goes down. Big basket. Lori Tromley has just got a great shot for a big kid. She likes facing the basket. Boy, her last four games, Jill, too. 42 points and 29 rebounds. She's really been heating it up here in the last two weeks of this season. Well, she, she's been lead. the difference maker, I think, for Illinois State in the last two weeks. Four-point lead in the basketball for Illinois State. Shelton. Works on Schilly. Now it's Hudson. Beglin on her. Nine on the shot uh, clock now. Cerrone's going to flatten it. Cerrone pull up from the top of the circle. Short, front of the iron. Surprisingly, Beglin slowed it down just a little bit coming up the floor. Makes you wonder how winded they might be. 
Now Beglin tries to draw contact off the glass, couldn't get it to go. But the Redbirds have sagged off her, daring her to shoot that 15-footer, but she'd rather penetrate. You're absolutely right, and they keep sending her to her left hand. Credit Tiffany Hudson, who's been on her the majority of the time. Illinois State a little stagnant in their offense right now. Shelton from the outside. Shelton now the first player in double figures give her 12 and another three-point make and now Jim Weedy says I need some time off. Remember Shelton, the 30% shooter from that three-point arc. She definitely quieted some of those Indiana State fans. Time out on the floor. 14.30 to go. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 power plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows goes right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activation Line, arranged by this station, for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. More and more people are rinsing daily with prevention mouth rinse. Have you tried it? I'm a nurse and a mom. As a caregiver, I depend on prevention mouth rinse. It's an important part of the daily oral care I recommend. I'm Roger Schnelton. I've been a pharmacist for 38 years. Many cancer patients experience oral complications from chemotherapy and radiation treatments. I recommend prevention mouth rinse. It gets results and it's safe for all ages. Prevention mouth rinse, available at these locations. Just when it looked like the Sycamores were primed to attack, the Redbirds have answered. First it was Tiffany Hudson, then Amber Shelton. I think the birds like this up-tempo as much, if not more so, than the Sycamores, and they're getting in stride offensively. And Jim Weedy is having a very loud conversation right now with Connie Pardue. I'm not really sure what it's about right now. I think that he just got a warning. Oh, he... Whoa, he got the tee. Oh, Perhaps my. from being out of the box? What, what? Uh, possibly, but I'm sure it was yelling at the official. What I don't know is what he was questioning. It may have happened during the break. We certainly didn't see it happen, and no. all of a sudden we're ready to put the ball back in play, and, and Connie Pardue tees up Jim Weedy. Not a good time for the Sycamores to lose two points. That makes it a nine-point spread for the Redbirds. And he is still in Rich Fox's ear over there. And so the Redbirds get their two free throws, thanks to Christy Cerrone. And now Indiana State will have the basketball. Well, we mentioned that the Redbirds and the Sycamores have done a wonderful job in developing a rivalry in the last couple of years and certainly this kind of a game won't hurt we'll step aside now we've got an official timeout with illinois state leading indiana state 44 35. this is the spot happened right here it was devastating i wanted a boat my whole life it was a 16 foot deep v aluminum burned and sank this is my dream boat it's about all that was left. The first person I called was Mike, my insurance agent. Then I called my wife. I knew immediately how much that boat meant to Mark. The boat burned in June, and by mid-July, I had a new boat. You get to know every customer. It made me feel a heck of a lot better. Country Insurance and Financial Services. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 power plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. 
never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activations line arranged by this station for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. This copywritten telecast is presented by the authority of Illinois State University and WMBD-TV and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Illinois State University and WMBD Television. Kurt Pegler, Jill Hutchison back with you. We're about five and a half minutes into the second half. Illinois State leads Indiana State 44-35, significant in the fact that the Sycamores are a perfect 9-0 in the Missouri Valley Conference. An unbeaten start to the season for them, and Illinois State just trying everything it can do to contain the Sycamores' offense, and it's been mission accomplished so far. They're doing a good job without being real flashy, just steady. Oh, fourth foul on LaShawn Johnson. And Laura Rodolfi, who we've seen before have flashes and stretches of brilliance, is going to get to the free throw line. Rodolfi's really got good legs. She's, she's got a good spring in her, and she gets up above Johnson. Johnson pushing into her with that right arm. She just needs to be straight up. And Rodolfi makes good on the free throw. And she's pulled the Sycamores back to within six at 44-38. Sycamores again with three freshmen on the floor here. Hudson, who's had the hot hand here in the second half, missed the shot. And Indiana State comes away with it. That's another freshman. Leah Phillips on the floor now for Indiana State. It's Tiffany Rada. Back inside, they're pounding the ball inside and scoring off the glass again is Kara Shilly, another freshman player. Uh, it looks like that's the game plan here, Kurt. I think they're going to just keep trying to attack the glass inside. And the Sycamores have brought a nice man contingent in there, trying to get their team back into it. Now Shelton. Redbirds could really use a basket here. Cerrone drives. Uh, her pass down is deflected and stolen away and a foul in the backcourt, it looks like, on LaShawn Johnson. That should be LaShawn's fifth foul. They've been trying to get uh, Lori Trumley in the game and haven't been able to, but LaShawn just totally off balance, bangs into Leah Phillips there. That definitely depletes the inside uh, core players for Illinois State. Frankly, that leaves Holly Hallstrom, Lori Trumley, and Bray Banks, the only three kids to play inside. Well, Johnson had four points and five rebounds, gave the Redbirds some nice minutes off the bench, but has fouled out of the game with 13.26 to go. And again, uh, three of those five rebounds were offensive, and that made a huge difference. And now the Redbirds trying to protect a four-point lead. Beglin from the top of the circle, knocks down it. They're going to say it was a two, her foot was on the line. That's the one thing Melanie Beglin has improved since last season, and that's her range. She's much more effective at the three-point arc. Yeah, that was Stephanie Lish, pardon me for that. She knocks down that jumper. It's a two-point basketball game right now. Trumbly from the outside, Whoa. missed it. Now it's Beglin. That looks like a desperation shot. She's penetrating on Cerrone, draws contact with a blocking foul against Christy Cerrone. Yeah, Cerrone really didn't get set on that, I don't think. Mel Beglin changed speed as she attacked the basket. Watch that little hesitation, and then she just turns it on. Cerrone just out of position to, to defend that. That's Cerrone's third foul as well. Yeah, the fouls are starting to pile up. Hallstrom with three fouls for the Redbirds, too. Mm -hmm. That's four fouls for the Birds in the second half. Only two for the Sycamores. And after a one foul, but since the tee, the Sycamores have gone on a 12-0 run. Something worked, didn't it? <laughs> he got his message to his players. And the Sycamores have a 47-44 lead with 11.52 to go here at Redbird Arena. 
of 10 people agree. Bigger refunds are better. And at Sharp Income Tax Service, you'll get bigger refunds within minutes of walking through our doors. There's no faster way to get your money than Sharp's Money Now program. You'll get more refund and loan options than from any other tax preparation company. Plus, Sharp offers free electronic filing and, best of all, free check cashing. So don't wait weeks. Get your money now and get it cashed for free at Sharp Income Tax Service. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 Power Plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activation Line, arranged by this station, for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. Women's college basketball today, men's college basketball next Saturday night. Illinois State and Bradley here at News Channel 31. 4 o'clock tip time from Redbird Arena, and we'll bring it to you live. A quick check of the Missouri Valley Conference women's standings. You see it 9-0. Indiana State with a perfect first half of the regular season, looking for its first ever 10-0 start. The Redbirds with three wins, but they've really come on strong here in recent weeks in the Valley, and that's the reason why we thought this game was really going to be an interesting matchup. If you just look at cold numbers at the standings, you might say, well, that doesn't look like much of a matchup, but it goes way beyond those numbers. Oh, no question. I think these teams match up so darn well, and Illinois State playing at home makes them a good 10-point better. The Woodbirds really have struggled offensively here in the last two minutes, and again, Indiana State on a 12-0 run after head coach Jim Weedy was teed up. Here's Lish. She's had the hot hand today. Her shot is no good off the back of the iron. Ricochets all the way out to half court. Cerrone tracks it down. Now it's Shelton in the front court. Her 12-footer is missed. Tipped around. On the floor. Out of bounds to the Sycamore. Whoa. McCracken landed on her knee coming out of bounds there. Illinois State, again, getting good shots. They're short on a lot of them. Makes, them one, makes you wonder if they're running out of legs out there. Here's Lish at the top of the circle now. She's going to drive on Hallstrom and score. Stephanie Lish. Boy, as well as Illinois State defended the first half, it, you almost feel like Indiana State is having their way here in the second. Lish with 11 points now, and that matches her scoring total from the first meeting of the season between these squads and Terre Haute. Now Hallstrom draws contact. She'll get to the free throw line. Yeah, nice move by Holly Hallstrom to, to get to the basket there. Well, early in the game, Holly was having a lot of success right around the basket. The Redbirds went away from that a little bit. Now perhaps they're going back to it. Well, there's no question that both teams are attacking the basket more, and Holly Hallstrom is so effective down there. It had a 30-point effort against the Sycamores in Terre Haute. 50 rebounds in her last four games, and again, we've been pointing at Lori Trumbly, as one of the reasons for the Redbirds' resurgence here in the last couple of weeks, but certainly Holly Halston's been in the middle of that as well. There's no question, and she's the lone senior on this Redbird squad. Number two in the Valley in rebounds with almost 10 boards a game. The Redbirds still stuck on 44. Driving and scoring again is the freshman, Leah Phillips. That was nice defense by Christy Cerrone that time. Phillips has had a nice finish. And now Robin Pinston wants time out. See if the Redbirds can get back on track. It was 44-35 when Jim Weedy got his technical foul. And since that time, it's been a 16-0 Sycamore run. And now it's a 51-44 Indiana State advantage. Well, I think Robin Pinston's got to be trying to pump up the troops a little bit here and get them back in this ball game before it gets out of reach. Seven-point spread now for the Sycamores, but Jim Weedy's technical 
obviously had an impact. Well, they just announced the attendance at better than 3,500, 3,581 today's attendance. That's the second largest crowd in Redbird Arena history. Well, they so, were shooting for 4,000, I think, and that means they're about 500 short of where they wanted to be. But still a nice crowd here. And the no Redbirds question. trying to respond in front of this big crowd. Illinois State really needs a basket. Yeah, they need to score here big time. As we approach the 10 minute mark left in this one. Indiana State switching everything right now and then trapping that ball screen. Shelton gets the ball down low to Brea Bank who laid it in and the Redbirds finally break the 16-0 Indiana State run. Bearhoff goes inside. Oh. Menpa, she took that extra step by it. Yep. Rachel Menpa is getting frustrated. She's just having things not go her way in this second half. And Kristen Weddle will come back in, replace Tiffany Rada. Well, the Redbirds had a lot of success running their offense and actually playing really locked down good defense in the second in the uh, in the first half. But it's been a different story here in the second half, hasn't it? Well, it has. I, I think. I just think that technical fired up Indiana State, and they have been relentless. Birds need to get another bucket here, Kurt. Eight on the shot clock. Cerrone tries to penetrate, lost the dribble, looking for help, three to shoot. Hanging, firing, and scoring. Oh, my. Great job by a freshman in a trap with the clock winding down. And she was caught between a rock and a hard place, and made something out of nothing. Now we're going to have an over-the-back call against Stephanie Lish, it appears. Well, no, it, Mempa. It's going to be ball. important here for Illinois State to keep their poise. So despite the fact they've lost the lead, if they can stay poised, they can come back in this game, and they're showing that now. Well, it's a one-possession game. Even with the 16-0 Indiana State run, the Redbirds can tie it with a three-ball here. Absolutely. They just need to keep everybody that can play on the floor here and get rid of some of these fouls. Both teams with four now in this half. Oh, they've got a mismatch because Indiana State is switching everything. Redbirds didn't identify the switch, though, and now it's Megan McCracken shot couldn't get it. Lori Trumbly was being guarded by Melanie Beglin. There's about a seven-inch differential there, but the Redbirds didn't identify it. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a freshman type of error, missing that switch. Now it's Rodolfi, who scores off the glass. He shot it right over Trumbly. Well, now what they are going to do is keep pulling Trumbly away from the basket, attack her on the dribble, because she, she is not the fastest kid defensively. And Rodolfi is going to be whistled for the foul that time on the defensive end. That's a good matchup for Dolphy and Trumbly. A couple of players who go at it very hard. No the question. Team foul 45, Laura Rudolphy, her second. Team foul number six on the Sycamores. So that's the that. sixth team uh, foul against the Sycamores. That could be a major, major factor in the second half. Redbirds will be at the free throw line now as they've hit the bonus. As we approach the eight-minute mark left in this one, it's a five-point Indiana State lead. Redbirds led by 12 in the, oh. at one point in the first half. Short shot is missed that time by Shelton. Got a good look, couldn't get it to go down. Yeah, she had a nice gimme shot on that baseline. Looks like she took her eye off and looked at the defense. Illinois State sliding under ball screens, and that's allowing them most of the time to stop that penetration. Beglin draws contact on Trembley and scores. Again, what Melody Beglin does so well, if you watch this replay, she uses the ball screen, and she reuses it, and that caught Christy Cerrone over the top and caused them to have to give help in the paint. Beglin in double figures now with 12. She can make it 13 from the foul line when we come back. The Sycamores have a seven-point lead. Are you ready for your next power outage? If not, we can help you get ready with a Guardian home standby generator from Midwest Equipment. Guardian generators are fully automatic, so you never have to turn them on or off. They run on LP or natural gas, so you never have to worry about keeping fuel in them. And at Midwest Equipment, we don't just sell Guardian generators. We offer installation and service after the sale. Don't be left in the dark. Own a Guardian home standby generator from Midwest Equipment. We are Central Illinois' generator headquarters. 
basically helpless. The wind was howling. The storm rolls in. My little boys were awful scared. A swath of at least 40 miles. And that's when the hail began to fall. It sounded like a train. Bam, bam, bam. Pretty good sized dents. Didn't even try to count how many there were. There was a message from Barb, Barb Cadu, my agent. She was checking on all of her customers to see how they had fared with the storm. I wanted my clients to feel at peace. Barb actually called me first. Country Insurance and Financial Services. This year, your team could win it all. It's Hoops in the Heartland, March 9th through 12th in Springfield. Don't miss the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament featuring all 10 Valley teams. Get your tickets now. Well, Christy Cerrone has been a magician on the floor for the Redbirds all season long, and this was a magic act around a double team with the shot clock winding down, Coach. She somehow flings it up and gets it in. I'll tell you how she even got out of that trap is miraculous, but then to find the basket, uh, uh, she's just doing a knockout job for Illinois State. Beglin now with a dozen points here in the second half after being held at just one point in the first half. Right now, the Sycamores on a 21-4 run over a six-minute stretch. Illinois State just got in each other's way that time in that motion offense. Rhea Banks left Whoa. open. Shot was blocked by Rudolph. She got it back. She never quit, and she scored. Nice heads-up play by a, another freshman, Brea Banks. This league is full of good young players, and they're just going to keep getting better. And we're seeing a bunch of them on the floor here this afternoon. Beglin is guarded by Tiffany Hudson this time. Beglin. Tries to work around a screen from Rodolfi and knocks down the jumper. That's the hard part. You go under the screen. If she can hit that three, you, you're in big trouble. Now we're seeing the Melanie Beglin. That's the Missouri Valley Conference front runner for player of the year. Well, the nice thing that Beglin's done is kept her poise. And Whoa. Banks answers with a three. Just her 11th three-point make of the season. That was big time. Bray she Banks likes, has she got likes a to great, shoot, yeah. yeah. She loves to look at it out there, and she... Oh. Beglin with the penetration and the pass to Kerry Schilly. That was nice defense that time by Bray Banks also. Seven-point Sycamore lead. Every time the Redbirds try to make a run here, the Sycamores have an answer. Under six and a half to go, and we've got a whistle away from the basketball. It's going to be against Indiana State. Yeah, good cut in there by Holly Hallstrom that caused that foul. That will give them a, a bonus here. More substitutions now for the Sycamores as Jim Weedy's going to send three fresh bodies back in. Rodolfi and Schilly and Verhoff all go to the Sycamore bench. Again, Jim Weedy doing a nice job using a lot of people, keeping people as fresh as they can. Holly Hallstrom to the free throw line. Terrific high school player in Moline and then a junior college star too at Kirkwood Community College. They've got quite a program there. They do, and Holly helped them get into some national recognition there. Holly makes both of her free throws, and the Redbirds are back within five now. Illinois State needs a couple of defensive stops, don't they? Yeah, big time. And they've got Beglin really doing all the creating right now. Beglin is fouled by Tiffany Hudson, who reached in on her. What Beglin does so well is change of speed. It's not always being the fastest player out there, but being able to change your speed is what's deceptive and throws a defender off. Crossover dribble, move left, move right, always keep you guessing. Yep, no question. And, and really, Tiffany Hudson's doing a nice job defending her. Illinois State in a, a zone on a baseline out of bounds here. <laughs> Tiffany Red is in the game that she's going to trigger. She gets it into Lish now. So we approach the six minute mark left in this basketball game. That was interesting. In this zone, Amber Shelton is pulled clear out to face guard Melanie Beglin. Beglin with a basketball now. She gives it up. Now it's Memp on the baseline. Works the baseline. May have stepped on the baseline. She did. Yeah. Well, that was a wonderful move, too. It was. <laughs> Poor Mempa. She has just not had the breaks today. 
She started out like a house of fire, and nothing's gone right yep. for her since the opening moments of the game. Two of eight from the floor. Redbirds with a chance to close within three. Shelton cut off at the baseline. Now she gets it back. She's got it by Beglin. Ten seconds left on the shot clock here. Cerrone gets a screen from Banks. Missed the shot. Falls from the offensive board and stick back. Oh. Can't get it to go. Tip out. Amber Shelton. So two offensive rebounds by the Redbirds. Nice effort by the Birds just to keep it alive. Hallstrom is second in the Missouri Valley Conference in rebounding, and you're seeing why. That's her now. Backing in on Mempa. Her short shot is in, and it's a three-point opportunity. Nice job by the Birds to keep pushing the ball inside. That seems to be their strength right now. And they're very patient trying to get the ball to Holly Hallstrom. And now Hallstrom, who just made a couple of foul shots a moment ago with a chance to make it a three-point play, and she does. And the Redbirds are within two now. Holly Hallstrom, over the last four games, has averaged over 12 boards a game. Now her average for the season's over nine, so she's done a great job. And now this a crowd of 3,500 has awakened, and Melanie Beglin's got an answer. She is amazing. Melanie Beglin. So Beglin with a three-point shot, and I'll give her 15 on the game, and Amber Shelton spins and missed the wow. short shot. Shelton's had so many opportunities this half. She finished first half and struggled this half. Now Beglin driving again, and the foul's going to be on Hudson. Well, Nearly I'm surprised they didn't give her an intentional on that because Hudson just pushed her going to the basket. 20, 50, Somebody could say, Coach, how could Look there be Beglin. two different halves from yeah. Melanie Beglin. The first half she couldn't throw it in the ocean and here she looks like an all-world player. You know, I think sometimes Mel gets casual offensively and, and she tries to let everybody else get into the game. But when push comes to shove, I think uh, Drake found out she can definitely do it when she has to and now the Redbirds are finding out. Well, she averages 18 a game and now she's at 19. Give her 20 points after a one-point first half. Yeah, she does what she has to do to win a ball game. And she's given the Sycamores a seven-point lead. Under four and a half to go now. 65-58 Indiana State. Hallstrom inside draws the foul on Rodolfi. Yeah, it was fortunate she got the foul because obviously Holly got too far into the basket to finish. And Rodolfi could have let her go there. Well, the Redbirds are very content on pounding the ball inside with Holly Hallstrom right now. Yeah, the problem is they're, they're having to exchange twos for threes if Beglin keeps shooting three ball. Again, Illinois State needs to stop here. If uh, Hallstrom can make this, it's still a five-point ball game. Well, the Sycamores have been able to run their offense. They've got their wow. shooting percentage up to 49% right now, and they were 37 at the opening half. Yeah. D Jim Weedy has called for a, a slowdown in the offense and, and just have them run the offense, use some clock. Rodolfi on the low block. Short shot, can't get it. Austin the rebound. Redbirds in transition now. Megan McCracken for three. Oh. Couldn't get it. Holly Hallstrom, another offensive board. Blocked by Rodolfi. Nice block by Rodolfi. That was huge. Beglin driving on Banks. Blocked by Hallstrom, but contact. And there's going to be a couple of foul shots coming from Melanie Beglin. It looked like a little bit of a frustration foul by Hallstrom that time. Official. Timeout on the floor. Officials timeout. Redbirds trail the Sycamores 65-60. Don't go anyplace, folks. 3.41 to go here at Redbird Arena. Are you ready for your next power outage? If not, we can help you get ready with a Guardian home standby generator from Midwest Equipment. Guardian generators are fully automatic, so you never have to turn them on or off. They run on LP or natural gas, so you never have to worry about keeping fuel in them. And at Midwest Equipment, we don't just sell Guardian generators. We offer installation and service after the sale. Don't be left in the dark. Own a Guardian home standby generator from Midwest Equipment. We are Central Illinois' generator headquarters. Basically helpless. The wind was howling. The storm rolls in. My little boys were awful scared. A swath of at least 40 miles. And that's when the hail began to fall. It sounded like a train. Bam, bam. 
Bam. Pretty good sized dents. Didn't even try to count how many there were. There was a message from Barb. Barb Cadu, my agent, she was checking on all of her customers to see how they had fared with the storm. I wanted my clients to feel at peace. Barb actually called me first. Country Insurance and Financial Services. in Springfield. Don't miss the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament featuring all 10 Valley teams. Get your tickets now. Back here at Redwood Arena, 3.41 to go here in regulation. Indiana State 65, Illinois State 60. Kurt Pegler, Jill Hutchison with you here on News Channel 31. Melanie Beglin has taken this basketball game over, hasn't she? Almost uh, single-handedly. <laughs> pardon me, she's scoring rebounding, defending. I mean, she has done it all right now for the Sycamores. Here she is at the free throw line. Ho! Oh, an atypical miss by Beglin. She was seven for eight going into that free throw. It still leaks, makes it a two possession game though, Kurt, and the birds still have time to, to pull this one out. 21 for Beglin now. Three over her average. Shelton looked inside, skipped it out to Banks. Ten on the shot clock. Christy Cerrone for three. Yes, indeed. That makes it a one-possession game. Illinois State has got to get a stop. Illinois State dropping back in his own defense. This is a tough time to play their zone when Indiana State is using clock here. Beglin down the lane, ball on the floor. Hell ball. ball possession is going to go to Illinois State. How's that for a defensive stop? That's amazing. And Beglin going through the middle of that, that zone to try and get a bucket. 65 to Magic Number. Two more points. It's a huge possession right now for Illinois State with just under three minutes and a three point difference here. It'd be a huge time to put a basket up we thought this game was going to be terrific and it's lived up to its expectation holly hallstrom again is going to get to the free throw line what a second half she's had well they did a nice job setting her up trying to clear that weak side so there wasn't a lot of help and uh verhoff came down there i mean she left her player completely to try and give help on that how about the touch pass from Amber Shelton? That's an almost impossible pass to make over the top You're of the zone like that. You're absolutely right. Tell you what, though, both coaches are pulling everything out of the hat, changing defenses and, and working these offenses. Hallstrom splits the free throws, and it's Shelton that comes away with it. Wow, what an offensive board. The Redbirds can shoot for a tie or the lead here. You know, you almost felt like Indiana State was taking off on offense on that one. Hallstrom is fouled by Mempa. Holly Hallstrom doing a great job posting up, calling for that ball in there. She caught Mempa on the baseline side. And Rachel Mempa has just picked up her fifth foul, so she's been disqualified. Yeah, Mempa's working hard in there, but that gave Holly the entire lane. Every trip down the floor, Halston is just saying, I dare you to stop me. Get the ball to me on the low block, and I dare you to stop me. She's had great luck against the Sycamores. I mean, obviously, her 30-point performance, <coughs> excuse me, in January was huge. Now, Ashley Clark has come in to replace Mempa. Clark. Newcomer of the year, as you mentioned earlier, uh, last year, but has had a mediocre season so far this year. She missed it, and it's uh, going to be an over-the-back on Trumbly. Almost had another replay of the last with an offensive rebound for the Birds. Uh, that was not a good time to pull a foul by Trumbly and put them at the line. Well, Robin Pinchin's team has taken the best punch from the Sycamores here in the second half and, and responded. It's a one-point basketball game now with Lish at the foul line. Lish only a 66% free throw shooter hits the first one. 
Now she had 15 on a game against Creighton where she made seven of 11 from the field. So she has one of those streaks in her where she can start knocking down shots and she makes both the foul shots. Back to a three-point second more advantage. Under two and a half to go here at Redbird Arena. There's still a lot of time for both teams here. Lady Sycamore is trying to go to 10 and 0 in the conference, and the Redbirds would love to hand Indiana State its first conference defeat of the season. Shelton in traffic, tough oh. shot. Only one team has gone undefeated in conference. That was way back when it was the Gateway. Southern Illinois put two seasons together undefeated. Cindy Scott just did a heck of a job. And now the Redbird Arena crowd is on its feet. Back oh. door to Lish. Missed the short shot. Got the rebound. Put it up. Missed it again. And it's still Indiana State's ball. Somehow, someway, it's Beglin that comes away with it. Birds miss an opportunity on the defensive boards that possession. It's so different going into a zone and covering your boards than being in a man. Beglin driving, floating, missing. Got the offensive rebound. And it's going to be a foul against the Redbirds. Oh, my. I, I almost thought Beglin would get that for opening up and pushing off. Well, that's not a very popular call here at Redbird Arena. But Christy Cerrone has whistled for the foul. Well, that's Beglin. You can't see it in the picture, but Beglin opens her right arm trying to get away from the traffic. Beglin at five foot six with two offensive rebounds in that set. I was just going to say, that was the difference. Beglin pulls down two offensive boards and gives him another chance. That keeps it a three-point ball game. She scored 20 against the Birds in Terre Haute. She now has 22 against the Birds here at Illinois State. And she's given her team a three-point lead at 70-67. Now, Jill, I'm going to put the coach's hat back on you. We know you've been retired for a couple of years. But tell us, what do the Redbirds have to do here? It's a three-point game. They've got the basketball with a minute 22 to go. Well, I think they can take either a two or a three. They don't need to get too greedy and feel like they have to have the three right now. But I would come back and play that man defense. I think they've been successful in their man. They can take away the outside shot a little bit better, give Beglin some room, force her to shoot the three. You it's know that Indiana State is going to go to Beglin. Absolutely. And it's almost like you want to say, have somebody else decide number 22 beat us. Yeah. Well, the other thing that Illinois State might try right now is switching every screen in a man and seeing if they can you know, take away all these penetrations because Indiana State may not take advantage of the mismatches. What a finish we have in store here at Redbird Arena. Illinois State down three with a basketball. They're going to try and get into Lori Trumley, it looks like, because she's got a mismatch with Lich. Cerrone off the glass. And a timeout by Robin Pinchton. The Redbirds with three players in double figures now. Cerrone with 16, Shelton and Halstom each with 14. So those three players have combined now for 44 of Illinois State's 69. Uh, Illinois State down by one right now with a minute four, Kurt, and they need to make a defensive stop here. Even if Indiana State uses the entire clock, Illinois State is going to get one more possession off of this. So defense is going to be absolutely critical. There's Christy Cerrone again. We mentioned the freshman from Chicago does not play like a freshman. Oh, she's got the poise of an upperclassman without a doubt. And she is absolutely fearless. She is not intimidated by anyone or anything. And one yet, minute left. Yeah, guess who's going to get the shot here? The dangerous part, though, is Beglin is as good distributing the ball as she is scoring. So if she doesn't have something, she'll find her open player. Yeah, she had a 19 assist game earlier this uh, year. Right around Trumbly and scored with the left hand. Well, and now it's Indiana State calling timeout. The Birds did try switching there, but what a mismatch with Beglin and Trumley. I'm sorry, I thought they called timeout, but it was, just a, it was just a whistle they wanted to uh, maybe adjust the clock. Now, Illinois State, I think, may need to go for the three. They're going to take a timeout and decide. All right, now Robin Pinchman says, let's map things out. Yeah, it's going to be tougher to get two possessions out of a 42-second clock. 
Well, right now, if you're looking at the timeout scenario, the Sycamores have a 60 left and the Redbirds have a 60 left, and that's going to be it. So each team equipped with one more timeout to go for these final 43 seconds. Here you see Beglin again. She has made a living doing this this afternoon, Jill. Uh, she, she did a great job getting past that, and, you know, she had to go through three people to get that shot. We might also mention both teams in a double bonus. So fouling is not a great opportunity here. So if you're the Redbirds, do you run a play for a three, or are you thinking two here because you might get the basketball back? See, I think with 40, 42 seconds, you've got to go for the three. You, you can almost always count on getting it back if you got 50 to 55 seconds on the clock, but to get it back with 42 could be tough, unless they got a quick shot, which they're not going to get. So they've got to find a three here. Well, Shelton, McCracken, and Cerrone are the three-point shooters on the floor for the Birds, and that's McCracken there. And she drew a foul. Well, and see, that, that can be a smart play by Indiana State. Indiana State. It yeah. takes away the opportunity for the three, forces Illinois State to settle for a two, but now they've got 30 seconds to get the ball back. Jim Weedy doing some substitution offense defense is going to put Lisa Verhoff back in the game here. So the lefty from Rock Island, Alleman knocks down the first shot. Burhoff is in, as you say, and Leah Phillips is out. McCracken's battled all kinds of injuries this year. Had a coming out party at Illinois where she knocked down seven three-pointers. And knocks down both foul shots for the Redbirds, who are within one at 72-71. The inbounds goes to Weddle. Birds pressing for the first time the entire game, and Beglin goes through it all by herself. Now they got to decide they're not going to foul, or are they? Look at Beglin. She just about single-handedly broke yeah. the press and wound the clock down to 15.6. Yeah, if they do it sooner, they have chance for three-point play there. Beglin's got to hit this. She's a 75% foul shooter. And she's so darn smooth. Wow. She's got a quick release even at the free throw line. She doesn't let the ball in her hands too she long. Doesn't. She catches it and she shoots it. You would say she's focused. <laughs> what a second half for Melanie Beglin. Held to one point in the initial 20 minutes of this basketball game. She's sitting on 27 now after 26 points here in this second half. Well, and she's also pitched in another six rebounds in addition to her points. But I, I said it before, Beglin just takes over a ball game. We remind you that our next televised game is one week from today. It's Illinois State and Bradley in men's hoops, a 405 tip time here at Redbird Arena. ISU Bradley men's hoops, our next televised game here on News Channel 31. But here we've got 15.6 remaining with the Sycamores clinging to a 74-71 lead over the Redbirds. Who gets the last shot here for Illinois State? You know, I think they're going to do it by committee, whoever's open. I, I don't think that there's a go-to player for the Redbirds, and because of that, they're going to run off of an, an offense and find their best shot. They've got at least three kids on the floor that can shoot the three, as can Trumley, for right. that matter. So we'll see if perhaps Megan McCracken gets the call, if Christy Cerrone gets the call, or if Amber Shelton. It's, it's nice when you've got a three-headed monster out there that you can kind of go to, isn't Well, it? yeah, and, and that's the key is, is you don't want to set it for one player in particular. There should be at least three options to this because they have plenty of time. 15 seconds gives them at least a couple chances at ball reversal. Well, the Redbirds are a 31% shooting team from three-point range. Yeah, now Indiana State's going to try and run that clock down in the backcourt. Here's Cerrone. 10 seconds. Oh, Megan had the shot. Driving. McCracken's going to take a two. The ball is blocked. The Sycamores with the defensive play. It's Rodolfi who comes over, and Verhoff comes away with it. And now with 2.6 to go, it's going to be the Sycamores at the foul line. Rodolfi's number four in the conference in blocks, and she's got great timing coming in here. Here comes McCracken. Nice job by Laura Rodolfi. That was a huge play for her. And so the Sycamores are now staring down the barrel of a 10-0 start in the Valley, a school record 10-0 start, unbeaten in the first half of the Valley Conference season and starting the second half with a victory as well. 
I'll tell you what, though, what a great performance by the Redbirds with a very depleted roster, very young team on the floor. Well, the Redbirds certainly have nothing to hang their heads about. They'll be disappointed in this one, but the Sycamores had to work very hard. They erased a five-point halftime deficit, and they come away with a 75-71 win, and that's your veteran leadership right there. No question, and it'll be interesting if they play one another in the Valley Tournament one more time. Thanks, Jill, for being with us tonight. Enjoyed it, Kurt. 75-71, Indiana State over Illinois State. The final score here from Redbird Arena in Normal. This is a notice to all cable TV subscribers in the Peoria TV viewing area. Our local TV channels have combined with Dish Network's America's Top 60 package to bring you the new 2497 Power Plan. WMBD, WYZZ, and nearly 70 others are together for less than $37 a month normally, but now yours for less than $25 the first three months. And listen to this. Your new Dish Network service gives you the ability to pause and rewind what you're watching right on the spot. Never use videotape again because you can record shows right to your system. It's all included. Be sure to call the Dish Activations line, arranged by this station, for an extra bonus. Three free months of movie channels. Switch from high cable rates to a power package of our local channels, nearly 70 more, the ability to pause and rewind, 25 free movie channels, and a special rate of $24.97 a month. Get in now while it's all still here together. 1-888-882-DISH. 1-888-882-DISH. Have you heard about the $253 million Vioxx verdict? Estimates of how many people have been injured by Vioxx, Celebrex, and Bextra keep going up. If you use one of these drugs and had a heart attack or stroke, I want to talk to you. The $253 million Vioxx verdict may lead directly to money settlements all over the country. If you used Vioxx, Celebrex, or Bextra, don't put this off. Call 800-801-0900. That's 800-801-0900. Wish you could wake up in a new place with a new career? You can. Why not take a look into an affiliate of Le Cordon Bleu Schools North America? You can get a fresh start in a fresh city in the in-demand culinary industry. You could have fun working at restaurants, hotels, and resorts in some of the best cities in the world. Call now for a complimentary brochure. Operators are standing by. Call toll-free 800-761-0593. Call now. Illinois State Redbird Basketball on WMBD is sponsored by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Making a difference for you. We found two victims inside uh, with the suspect possibly fleeing the area in a vehicle. Two men have been shot in Creve Corps while the suspect is still on the run. It's awesome. It's awesome. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. The, the people around this area, we've got people donating items from out of nowhere. A small central Illinois community comes together to help one of their own. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jay Verner. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tricia Skidmore. A gunman is still on the run from Creve Corps Police. A warrant has been issued for 25-year-old Patrick Bukurski for attempted murder. Police say he's the man who shot two people last night at Shotgun Willie's in Creve Corps. One victim was shot in the stomach. The other was shot at least three times in the leg. Bukurski is a white male, 5 feet 11 and 200 pounds. He could be driving a red Buick Riviera with Illinois plates. If anybody knows where the subject is, please call us. Um, he is considered armed and dangerous, um, and we can use all the help we can get. The hospital has not released the condition of the two men. Bloomington police are now batting a thousand when it comes to armed robbery arrest. That's after 25-year-old Jason Brown was arrested in Cicero last night. Police say Brown is the man who robbed the National City Bank on East Empire and Midwest Title Loans on IAA Drive. Both robberies happened January 23rd and the robber attacked clerks at each business with pepper spray. This arrest comes a day after police nabbed two other people who are accused of several other robberies in Bloomington. Police say they considered all five of this year's business armed robberies solved. The seventh Pekin High School teen to die so far this school year has been laid to rest. Hannah Holder died earlier this week after collapsing at the school. The senior had plans to go to Bradley next year. Hannah's mom says she died after suffering a heart attack. Hannah complained of having a dizzy spell the night before she died. Family and friends got a chance to say their final goodbyes at the funeral this morning. Earlier this school year, three Pekin students died in a car accident.
Two died in a dirt bike collision, and one died of leukemia. The historic viewing of Coretta Scott King is underway in Georgia today. Hundreds of people watched as King's casket made its way through the streets of Atlanta to the state capitol building. King is the first female and African-American woman to lie in state at Georgia's capitol. Mrs. King died early Tuesday following a lengthy illness. She also suffered a stroke and a heart attack last year. Funeral services Atlanta, will be Tuesday. King was 78 years old. Brittany Meischner became a quadriplegic after diving into a shallow pool last summer. It's been a struggle for her ever since. Mounting medical costs and transportation issues have been burdensome to her family. Now Brittany's hometown of Princeville is gathering around her, helping to make her life a little easier. WMBD's Brett Lemoyne joins us now with more on a community coming together. Brett. Tricia, hundreds of items were auctioned off today, all to help Brittany live an easier life. After an incredibly difficult few months, Brittany Meishner has something to smile about. Her community has come together. We put this together uh, to raise funds for Brittany so that she could try to get uh, a, a wheelchair accessible van. Items auctioned off will go towards the purchase of the van. Money raised will also help buy a moving apparatus so Brittany can get in and out of her own bed and shower. So we decided to put, to, put together a benefit to raise those funds to help her with those kind of things and, and any ne mes medical necessities that she may have come uh, down the road. Brittany just returned to Princeville High School to finish her senior year. But it's difficult and time consuming for her mother to take her there and to her physical therapy appointments. She goes to therapy three times a week. But then uh, there's times when she has to take her to the doctor. With donations like a used car, scooter, and tickets to Vegas, Princeville is one step closer to making a difference. We've got a football from the Kansas City Chiefs. We've got a football from the Patriots signed by Rodney Harrison. Uh, a football signed by um, Marty Booker, a former Bear. And it's Princeville's outpouring of affection and willingness to help Brittany that amazes her family. Oh, Lord, this is something I, I never expected. I knew they was having this, but I never expected it to be this big. And it's Brittany's spirit that lifts everyone else's. She just amazes me with her attitude. She just stays so positive, and she is so focused on learning to take care of herself. She's just doing a wonderful job with that. And if you'd like to help, donations are being taken at the State Bank in Princeville. Brittany plans to become a psychologist to help young people who have had spinal cord injuries. Tricia. All right, Brett, thanks. Basketball players are hoping to score big for a needy cause. The third annual Hoops for the Cure event took place this afternoon at Bradley's women's basketball team took on Evanston at the Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. Bradley athletes will donate half the game's tickets revenue to the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. As part of a coach's challenge, $25 will be pledged for every Bradley three-point basket made against Evansville. Popcorn, t-shirts, and contest revenue will also go to the foundation. It's something that's always been very close to my heart, and I think through doing events like this, people are aware and they can, they can actually get a passion for it, even if it hasn't touched their lives personally. Bradley's goal is to raise more than $9,000 today. Well, preps are underway in Detroit for Super Bowl 40. Detroit could get up to nine inches of snow by tomorrow, but football fans aren't letting...